Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic which is drug therapy in myocardial infarction. So let's get into the video. Before that we have to know what is acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome arises when vessel becomes occluded by thrombus. Thrombus is the blood clot. So whenever any vessel becomes occluded by thrombus there acute coronary syndrome occurs okay there are three grades in acute coronary syndrome first one is unstable angina second one is non st elevation myocardial infarction the third one is st elevation myocardial infarction here the st represents the st segment which we see in ecg okay keep that in mind okay what is unstable angina here the when atherosclerotic plaque shoot off embolus downstream to cause microinfarct is too difficult to understand i'll say it in a easy way unstable angina occurs when there is decreased blood flow or oxygen supply to heart okay we all know that uh, the very common feature of angina is chest pain okay comparing to stable angina here the in the unstable angina uh, the chest pain time duration will be more okay it will be more than 10 minutes okay so next we will see what is nstemi non st elevation myocardial infarction here when necrosis confined to endocardial layers okay see what is necrosis necrosis is death of any cell or tissue because of any disease or disorder okay so here in STEMI only the endocardial layers is necrosed while STEMI full ventricular wall is necrosed okay so next is according to severity of acute coronary syndrome may be greater than to yeah i told it already which is unstable angina ua and the second one is non st segment elevation myocardial infarction stemi but the third one is st segment elevation or myocardial infarction which is stemi okay ua and stemi and the third one is stemi so let's see the differentiation of uh, these ua nst emi and st emi okay here when uh, we see the vascular obstruction in ua it is incomplete while in nst emi it is incomplete but partial thickness is you know obstructed while in st emi the vascular obstruction is complete and the second one is myocardial necrosis is absent here in ua while uh, here smaller area is necrosed as i told you already in st segment elevation myocardial infection larger area almost completely okay almost all area is necrosed and uh, st segment elevation in ua and nst emi obviously it is absent and as the name indicates we know that st emi there there is presence of NST segment elevation. Okay, so let's see what is myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is ischemic necrosis of a portion of the myocardium due to sudden occlusion of a branch of coronary artery. Okay, it is very specific due to sudden occlusion of a branch of coronary artery. Okay, about one fourth of the patients die before therapy can be instituted. Remaining are best treated in specialist coronary care units. Yes, that is what we are going to see today. The treatment gives in giving to the myocardial infarction patients. So those who receive such facilities can be greatly benefited by drug therapy, which according to needs of individual patients is directed to. Yeah, these are the treatments which may be a need of a my MI patient. So according to that, the drug therapy is given to that particular patient. Okay. So what are the what are they? One first one is pain. Second is oxygen. Maintenance of blood volume, tissue perfusion and microcirculation. Correction of acidosis. Prevention and treatment of arrhythmia. Pump failure. Thrombolysis and reperfusion. Prevention of thrombus extension, embolism and venous thrombosis. Prevention of remodeling and subsequent congestive heart failure. And the last which is very important is prevention of future attacks. So this you can be keep in your mind using a very easy mnemonic. Okay. So this is the mnemonic which is pull out microcard properly. You can uh, keep the 
keep this as a mnemonic for your first five treatments pull out micro uh, micro card properly you can keep your credit card in your mind okay if you put that in your atm machine you have to take it out properly okay so you can keep that in your mind and the second five is pump this pot tightly roughly fully okay pumping a pot uh, tightly roughly fully so P T P pot that P uh, stands for prevention. So prevention of T, prevention of R, prevention of F. You can remember these two mnemonics for those ten treatments, which is very easy and very very important also. So C pull out micro card properly. P stands for pain. O stands for oxygenation. Micro stands for micro circulation and also maintenance so maintenance of blood volume tissue perfusion and micro circulation and c card c stands for correction of acidosis and the final p properly stands for prevention and treatment of arrhythmia okay arrhythmia so the next five mnemonic is pump this spot as i say the pot p will be related to that tightly roughly fully pot tightly roughly fully so this pump is pump failure this t stands for thrombolysis and reperfusion and the p i already told you p stands for prevention tightly roughly fully trf so first prevention of thrombus extension which is related or all the others are related to thrombus extension embolism and venous thrombosis okay and p roughly pot roughly so that is prevention of remodeling and subsequent congestive heart failure and the last one is pf which is future attacks prevention of future attacks these two mnemonics uh, may be very easy for you to remember these 10 treatments okay keep this in your mind so now we are going to see all those 10 treatments separately in detail so now for pain what they'll do is three doses of glycerol trinitrate is given and that three doses is 5 minutes with 5 minutes gap okay uh, otherwise they'll give uh, opioid analgesic which is morphine and they also give diazepam so these are the three treatments they'll give for pain second one is oxygenation you obviously know that for oxygenation we'll give oxygen inhalation and assisted respiration so this picture shows the assisted respiration treatment so there will be a reservoir bag where the oxygen is stored and through a mask the oxygen is inhaled by the patient okay so the third treatment is maintenance of blood volume tissue perfusion and micro circulation for all these things we will give iv infusion of saline or dextrose okay you, these all are liquid items you no know? blood volume tissue perfusion micro circulation so you keep saline in your mind it's very easy to remember slow iv infusion okay next is correction of acidosis acidosis can be occur due to formation of lactic acid okay so uh, there may be a formation of lactic acid so because of that acidosis may occur so for that obviously we know that for acidosis we'll give a bi uh, bicarbonate an alkaline so iv sodium bicarbonate can be used to correct it so obviously for acid we'll give alkaline next is prevention and treatment of arrhythmias Uh, for that beta blockers can be used in order to reduce the instance of arrhythmia if there is no contraindication s yes. if there is no contraindications beta blockers can be continued for the treatment of arrhythmias okay if tachyarrhythmias occur that can be treated with lidocaine procainamide or amiodarone so otherwise if bradycardia or heart block may be managed by atropine or electrical pacing electrical pacing is uh, that artificial pacemaker which will be kept in our heart there are more types of pacemakers are there which uh, one is a leadless pacemaker which we will keep in a groin area so likewise they can be corrected next one is uh, pump failure the objective is to increase cardiac output and or decrease filling pressure okay these two are the objectives one is to increase cardiac output otherwise to decrease filling pressure so that the pump failure can be controlled so what are the treatments uh, they are using for the pump failure first one is furosemide uh, second one is vasodilator and the last one is inotropic agent so these are the three drugs which is given for the patient who is suffering from pump failure okay 
Next is thrombolysis and reperfusion. We all know that thrombus is a blood clot. So thrombolysis is removing the clot. For reperfusion, plasminogen activator is given like altiplase, tenactiplase they are given. And for thrombolysis, a specialist treatment is given which is primary percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI. So how it is given, see the picture below. A catheter is inserted in a groin region and uh, see the blood first picture of the blood vessel see there is a blood clot and also a atherosclerotic plaque so that is the coronary artery which is blocked so there is no blood flow see the second picture what the catheter will do so see uh, catheter is inserted insertion of stent after balloon angioplasty so that catheter is inserted and it removes the blood clot and also the atherosclerotic plaque and what it will do is uh, stent will be placed with that catheter so there will be no further block further thrombus formation okay so third picture of blood vessel shows that stent in place so the blood flow is restored okay so this is the pci treatment next is prevention of thrombus extension embolism venous thrombosis so for these conditions aspirin clopidogrel and heparin. heparin is given so aspirin should be given for chewing and swallowing as soon as mi is suspected okay it is it should be given as soon as mi is suspected which aspirin okay second one is clopidogrel which is an antiplatelet drug okay the last one is heparin it is an anticoagulant it is given to prevent deep vein thrombosis okay so for venous thrombosis heparin is given Next is prevention of remodeling and subsequent congestive heart failure. For this, AC inhibitors or ARBs are proven efficacy and offer long-term survival benefits and it should be started as soon as the people is hemodynamically stable. ACE inhibitors is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and ARB is angiotensin receptor blockers. For this, we have to understand the diagram below. See the diagram below. Kidney secrete renin. Okay. Liver secrete angiotensinogen. So, only with the help of renin, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 clear now angiotensin 1 is being converted to angiotensin 2 with the help of ACE which comes from lungs ACE is angiotensin converting enzyme so what this angiotensin 2 will do to our body it acts on adrenal gland and it increases aldosterone it also increases sodium and water retention all over it increases BP okay so it is very very bad to our body for this we are inhibiting the angiotensin 2 how by inhibiting ace and also by inhibiting the angiotensin receptors angiotensin receptor blockers do that work so that it cannot act on uh, adrenal gland or any other parts of the body so this is the function of ac inhibitors and arbs so if you want to know more about renin angiotensin system i leave the link in the description you can see the video and understand it more if you want so last is prevention of future attacks that is by using platelet inhibitors like aspirin or clopidogrel and also beta blockers that reduce risk of reinfection congestive heart failure mortality okay so beta blockers very useful for these conditions and the last one is control of hyperlipidemia so by controlling hyperlipidemia we also reduce risk of cardiovascular events okay for by these three conditions we can prevent the upcoming attacks future attacks okay so the question of the day is how to correct acidosis in MI patients, myocardial infarction patients, I hope you all know the answer. It is very easy. Just leave the answer in the comment section. Thank you.